Hey guys, this is Red Lore. Nice to have you back here. We're going on. This is the fourth video, I think. Number four. Yep. Uh, we're going to be actually setting up a vanilla Minecraft server on the Linux box that I've showed you guys how to get up and get running. So, uh, first thing we need to do, or if I could speak, first thing we need to do is hit the Mojang website. And what we'll do in order to prevent us from having to remember the actual link to the server is we'll create a script on our Linux box that will go out and fetch it for us. That'll be nice. Uh, that way we can just run a script and automatically have the latest and greatest. Um, we'll go ahead and launch the server for the first time. We'll do some cleanup. We'll configure the server and some other tuning and whatnot. All right, so let's go ahead and get... Man, the white's burning my eyeballs out. Mojang, we need to hit the... Okay, looks like I got some updated stuff. All right, Mojang. Uh, no, we want to go to Minecraft. And we want to download. And we want to download the server jar file. Look, look at down here in the link is the direct link to the cloud. We're gonna, just going to copy this guy and minimize him for now. Let's go ahead and log in. Now we can do all of this as our user account. We shouldn't need any more root access on the box. So, And it would appear that my cursor doesn't work um, when I'm in here. So I'll try not to point. I've been using my cursor to do a lot of pointing. Um, I'm not sure how else I'll be able to point or indicate. Uh, we'll see. I'll give it a shot. All right. Uh, we are we are mostly done right, so I've covered LS and PWD. This is something I do generally when I log on to log on to a system, find out where I'm at and what I'm looking at. We don't need this JRE anymore. We've unpacked it, so I'm just going to select it with my right click and, or my left click, and I can right click and paste it. Uh, we don't need it anymore. We've unpacked it, so let's go ahead and get rid of it. There we go. All right, so. Let's uh, let's start with a directory called vanilla, and we'll change to it. There we go. All right. One of the utilities that I covered earlier on was wget, and we'll come back over here, copy this address paste it in here. All right, so I can wget and then paste in this URL and hit enter. And it runs out and it downloads that file for me and here it is beautifully right here. Excellent. So one of the other things we want to do, and I'm going to come up here and select oh, I don't need the space on the front of it. I'm going to select all of this so it's in my clipboard. And we're going to nano. Uh we'll call it git vanilla. And in here, this is a script, so there's a couple things we have to do in front, which is a pound sign and an exclamation point bin bash. This is the actual shell that's being used. And then we can right click and paste in our wget command, which will run out and fetch our server. We're done, so control X right down there on the bottom. Yes, enter. And there's our git vanilla. So let's do our rm minecraft. There it is. Now, in order to run uh, this command, actually let's do an ls-l. And I'll cover real quick all this stuff on the front. So what this tells me is in the order of user, group, oh, nope, group, and other, the permissions. So here for user, we have rw and nothing. So what this tells me is that this file is readable and writable by the user, readable by uh, the group, and readable by everybody. All right. so, and then we've got our user, 
and our group. So each user gets their own individual group. It's just the way Linux works. So this we can't run this, right? Uh, if this were something we could run, it would have a, an X here. So in order to do that, we need to use our change mode. Oh, and we want to do a user plus X for executable on get vanilla enter. Now if we do an ls-l, now we've got this X in here, and we notice that it's changed color, and that indicates that it's an executable now. So if we run it, and we run it by putting a dot slash in front of it to tell it that we want to run it out of this current directory, and look at that. It goes out and it fetches that for us. Awesome. So now we've got we've got some we've actually got something we can use. All right. So we need to uh, launch our server for the first time, and we do that by running Java, and we tell it which jar file we want it to use, and we tell it we want it to use the Minecraft underscore server. And I'm doing you see where it like completes these. This is just me tabbing, and it completes these. Um, so enter, and it's going to pick it up. It's going to generate world. And you're going to get some errors because some of these files don't exist yet. They're normal. Uh, once we're done, we can stop to stop the server. All right. And now we've got a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do an ls -l. All right. So here's quite a bit of stuff. Let's do, uh, let's remove the, all of the world files, right? Because all that's going to change. And remember, I have to do a recursive forceful world. There we go. And then uh, one of the other things that we want to do is uh, we want to update our server properties file. This is where all of the actual configuration bits for our servers live. So, oh, if I could type properties tab. Okay. All right. So, name level. Vanilla. Actually, um, yeah, vanilla. I'll, I'll pick this back up. We'll go from there. All right, maximum height, server IP. Um, If, so if we leave level seed blank, it's just going to randomly pick something. That's fine by me. We'll just leave it blank for now. Server IP. I'm, I'm not too concerned about some of this stuff. I'm not going to be covering any of the advanced configuration. Um, I will tell you a couple things that I tweak. Is I don't want so many folks on my server at one time. And I like um, the biggest view distance I can get. There are probably some folks that would complain about that. But anyhow. That's the way we're going to set this one up. You can change this as you see fit. So we're going to control X. Uh, yes, we want to save. And then we do want to save it as server.properties, so enter. <clears throat> there we go. Now, um, we can kick this back off, but what we have here in this directory is a pretty good baseline for future servers. Um, of course, you can come in and uh, let's, let's do, it's my server, so I want to be an op on it. So let's do a, let's put me in the ops.txt. Right. And might as well go ahead and also put me in the whitelist. Oh, it's white dash list. Um, oh, wrong button. Control X. Yes. Enter. And I, I'm not too concerned with putting anybody in a band IP or band players. Um, looks good. So here we are. I've got a great. <clears throat> starting point for any future servers that I might want. So um, I'm 
currently in the vanilla directory. If I do a cd dot dot to come up. Right now I'm just in my home directory. And there's our vanilla. Let's let's make a copy of this. Copy of CP. So I'm gonna copy vanilla to template server. Uh, we need to put an R on this to tell it that we want it to recursively copy. There we go. So now we have our vanilla server and we have our template server. Awesome. Um, so let's go back into... Let's go to our template directory real quick. And edit our server properties file. And we'll change the name so that it's not vanilla, and that it's just nothing. And then we'll go back to our vanilla server. Now, um, another thing that we can... So we, we executed our, our jar file right here. Let's just start it back up. Make sure that it starts up properly. It's generating a terrain. Awesome. I don't see any. Well, other than unable to. This will fix itself. I'm able to find the spawn biome. All right, so we're done here. Let's stop. All right, and now what we want to do is to create something that will allow us to tweak Java just a little bit. So let's do. Actually, you know what? We're going to have to... We'll do this in two places. Because we almost we almost got a template directory. We were missing one thing, which is uh, a startup script for our server. And again here with the pound sign, or the dollar sign, man, the number sign and exclamation point. All right, and then we want to do Java. Um, it's jar. All right. So in doing this, we can also go ahead and purge knowledge from our head of tweaking Java. And there is a flag, dash, capital X, lowercase mx. And I'm going to say 1G. What this does, it tells Java that this particular process has only ever allowed a maximum of one gig of system memory, ever. I've not found too many people that will tell you that Java does well with over with more than one gig. Minecraft certainly doesn't need a whole lot more than that, if any. Sorry. My throat was getting dry, I had to take a drink. Sadly, it's just water. So... <clears throat> All my servers run on one gig. I've had no performance problems other than processing power. Uh, but I limit the amount of users on my servers to five. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. Let's let's save it. Control X. Yes. Startup. All right, and here we are. We have to make this executable. User plus executable. Startup. So now we can do dot slash startup, and there's our server, nice and running. All right, so let's also, let's take our startup and copy it to uh, one directory up. So we're in my home directory slash vanilla, and we're going to copy the startup file up one level. There it is. And from here, we can copy um, startup to template server directory. And then we can remove it from the current directory. All right. There's startup. All right. Awesome, there we go. 
Now, uh, yep, I'm going to demonstrate a couple things here. So let's go ahead and get Minecraft kicked off. Yep. Log in. Multiplayer. Add a server. Uh, 247, I think. There we go. It's online. Five users. Boom. Here we are. Okay. Uh, while I'm here, let me... Turn. Okay, music is off. All right. So, here, look, I've logged in. There's me logging in. Now, if I close this... Yeah, I want to close the session. Oh, our server's gone. So this is a problem. And you'll recall like, uh, last episode, two episodes ago, I told you about screen. So what we want to do is, when we get logged in for the first time, when we're ready to start our server, is to first start the screen. All right. So we want to change to our vanilla folder. And we want to run our startup. And there's there's our server. I'll go back to the title screen, multiplayer, connect to the server. Boom, there we are again. This isn't a VM, so yeah. Okay, here we are connecting. Awesome. I'm going to close this again. Yeah, I want to close. Oh, we're still connected. So. What screen does is it allows that process to, to run in the background. So if I connect to it again, now I still have just a regular old prompt here, but if I type screen dash R, this will reattach me to any currently running screen sessions. And here we are, back at the server that's running. Now I could manually stop it, and I will, because we're done. There we go. Exit, oh, exit out here and here and close this up. So there we are. We have installed a vanilla Minecraft server on a Linux box. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please uh, subscribe, post comments, questions, suggestions that you have, um, and we'll talk to you guys next time. I think next... Uh, in the next iteration of this, we're going to get a bucket server set up, a craft bucket server. And I'll show you guys uh, how to get that. It's very much similar. We'll get craft bucket set up in a couple of plugins, show you guys how that's done.